Good morning, Cornerstone. For today's inspirational vitamin, we're going to read it. We're going to be reading over in Acts chapter four. So for yesterday's Sunday sermon, we started a new series. We're going to be looking at the resurrection of Jesus as seen through the Psalms. And uh, we looked at Psalm chapter two or Psalm two uh, yesterday. Um, and there is a direct quotation of that in Acts chapter four. And so I'm going to read this and talk a little bit about it. And hopefully you'll be inspired this morning with this inspirational vitamin. So in Acts chapter 4, we're going to start down in verse 23. And it says, When they had been released, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord and said, O Lord, it is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples devise futile things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For in this city, there were gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with all confidence while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. And so here uh, in Acts, basically, they're, they're citing this uh, Psalm chapter 2 and verse 1 that talks about, you know, why the nations rage and the kings of the earth take their stand against the Lord and against his anointed one. And we see that fulfilled in the New Testament. You know, the, the Gentiles or the nations raging were the Romans who uh, you know, took place in the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, the peoples, you know, devising or planning vain things, that was the people of Israel, right? The Sanhedrin, um, the people that voted for Jesus, that called for Jesus to be crucified. Um, the kings of the earth. Uh, Herod was uh, essentially a king set up by the Romans, a puppet king set up by the Romans over the Jewish people. And the rulers, that would be represented by Pontius Pilate. He was the governor or ruler at that time. And so, we see this, this psalm that was written, you know, hundreds of years before these events took place was prophesying about events that took place during New Testament times. Uh, but what I really want to focus on is, so the apostles get arrested, uh, Peter and John, and they're threatened, and they come back to their own people and they report what happened to them. And, you know, they essentially quote this scripture and then they pray, right? I know that sometimes just the same way they felt that the world was against them. The, the, the rulers of the Jewish people, the Gentiles, right? They had put Jesus to death and they were being persecuted as well. I mean, Jesus said, if they hated me, they'll hate you. And so the apostles were sort of living that out and their response to it was to cry out to God. And so my encouragement to us today is just like they did when we feel that the world is against us, whether that's governments or, or people in our offices or uh, you know, just society at large, when we feel like, man, they just are not supportive of the Christian way of life. They're not supportive. They are not for uh, Jesus. You know, no, that's just expected. That happened to Jesus. That happened to his followers. That'll happen to us. And I want us to respond the same way they did, just to pray for God to still do great things despite the opposition that goes on. And so my encouragement today is for us to pray for boldness. You know, in the midst of this, they said, let us not shrink back, but God, give us boldness to speak your word. And God granted them that. It said the place where they were meeting was shaken. It was like an earthquake. They had an earth shaking, an earth shattering prayer. And so that's my encouragement for all of us today. When we feel the, the weight of, of the world, we feel the weight of opposition against us. You know, let's not try to take matters into our own hands. Let's go to God in prayer and pray for his boldness uh, to be like Jesus, to be like the apostles, regardless of what's going on in the world. Let us follow Jesus with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So that's your inspirational vitamin today. We're going to keep looking uh, uh, through the psalm, looking at the resurrection through the psalms. But this is one connection from Psalm chapter 2 into the New Testament in Acts chapter 4. Let's have a great day.